Hey everyone, want to see a neat little trick? We've used this equation quite a bit over the uh, over our time together. Usually we write it with the sigma there, but just to keep things simple, I'm going to ignore that for now. We'll just know that we're talking about the net force. Uh, we know that acceleration can be expressed as the change in velocity over the change in time. So I can take that expression and substitute in for a. So f equals m times delta v over delta t. And uh, if I multiply both sides by delta t, I get f delta t is equal to m delta v. Now m delta v is another way of writing mass times velocity minus mass times initial velocity. This is just the momentum at uh, some final moment minus the initial momentum. So this term represents the change in momentum. And then the other term, oops, the other term, uh, the f delta t, is going to be a quantity we call the impulse. So this uh, expression then is known as the impulse momentum theorem. And then impulse sometimes is written out as a, uh, a capital J. So the impulse is equal to the change in momentum for some object. So uh, you know, the, the implications for this are basically that if we need to change the speed of some object with a set mass, really there are, uh, there are two main ways to go about that. Right? We can apply a really big force for a short period of time or we can apply a smaller force for a longer period of time. And this has uh, lots of implications, especially in safety features. We don't like experiencing very large forces, and so a lot of safety features focus on trying to increase the amount of time that these different forces act on us. So we have things like uh, airbags that slow us down gradually, whereas the, the steering column would slow us down very quickly in an accident. So if that time is larger than the force that our body experiences ends up being much smaller. Let's say that we have a, uh, a car traveling down the road at some um, set speed to begin with, and then the driver's going to hit the brakes, and that's going to cause a frictional force to act on the car for a, a given amount of time. We can use this information to figure out the new velocity of the car. Now we actually could solve this problem already using the net force equals mass times acceleration equation. Uh, so we could use that to figure out, okay, with our mass here and our force here, what's the acceleration? And then we can do a kinematics equation with acceleration and time and initial velocity to figure out final velocity. This is, uh, it's a similar setup, just um, all combined into a shorter number of steps. So we'll do this one as f delta t is equal to m delta v. So our force here is going to be 2200 newtons, and that's going to be acting in the opposite direction as that uh, starting velocity. So I'm going to make that a negative. Negative 2200 newtons times the time, 6.5 seconds, is equal to our mass, 1200 kilograms, times the change in velocity. So that's going to give us a value for the change in velocity of uh, negative, negative 2200 times 6.5 divided by 1200, which comes out as negative 11.9 meters per second. So then, since we know that delta V is equal to V minus V naught, we know this is negative. 11.9 meters per second is equal to V minus our starting speed, which is 32 meters per second. That our ending velocity is going to be 20.1 meters per second.